searching for a transgender part 11 so once we decided that he was going to uh, oh well we didn't decide excuse me he got put out of the military or should I say medically discharged because he could not pass his PT test so when that happened it was like okay well where are we going to move to because um, he was getting out of the military so we decided on the DFW area. We decided on the DFW area because my mom was in, um, had just got a house built randomly in the DFW area. And his mom had, you know, that same year or the year before in 2015 had moved down there. So here we are 2016 and we are relocating to the DFW. Now, when we relocated down there to the DFW, so did uh, his sisters. Um, and his youngest brother and his mom. So essentially like his same family that was in El Paso, who's always borrowing a car, always at my house, using my washer and dryer has now came or they were already in, or we all relocated to Dallas. So we're all in Dallas, literally all living on the same street. I cannot make this up. <laughs> So he ends up getting a, he was having a hard time finding a job right outside of, you know, getting out the military. Um, so he decided to go to the oil field. Now, when he was in the oil field, um, I decided to go to school for cosmetology and, or Still you know, because school. I didn't have a job lined up. This is like the first time that I didn't have a job lined up in the DFW. Um, I just wanted to go to school. I really wanted to do something that I wanted to do. Um, I wanted to love going to work. Like, I, I liked my last position a whole lot when I was in corporate, but I just wanted to do something that I love. And I was doing makeup and hair on the side, so it just kind of like made sense. I've been braiding hair since I was 10. I'm like, I'm, I should pursue this. Um, and I had started doing makeup, you know, professionally, like taking clients for makeup. I actually started doing that in Kansas. And then when we got to the DFW, I continued to, you know, pursue that or, you know, was trying to pursue that. So, anywho, um, we ended up about time <laughs> living in, in the North Dallas area. And y'all, I was not feeling that. Uh -huh, I'm like, we got to get up out of here. Uh, say what you want to say, but I'm I'm from uh, down Illinois. If you know, you know. I'm like, just because you're from the hood don't mean you want to be back in the hood. I'm like, this is not it. So we got to go. But at Dalton. that time, again, it's 2016. It's crazy. I thought it was expensive then. It's really expensive now. But the DFW was, you know, way more expensive than Kansas and El Paso. So I'm over here like, where we going to live at? So um, I found this big old house. In Frisco, I'm talking, this house was humongous, y'all. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It was a seven-bedroom house. Um, seven bedrooms, three full baths, and a half bath. That house was humongous. Uh, so I found this house, and since he ended up uh, taking a job in the oil field because his sister's baby daddy also was working in the oil field, and she was always by herself with her kids. She had one and was uh, two and was pregnant with, or well, she had one and was pregnant with, I don't know. She got a million kids now, hell, I don't know. Anywho, but um, it just made sense for us to live together. Now y'all, whoo cha, whoo cha, cha, cha. It's probably one of the stupidest decisions that I've ever made. <laughs> Um, so we moving all into this house in 2016. So in 2017, excuse me. So 2016, I you know found school, a school, started school for aesthetics specifically. And um, here we are, 2017. He's working in the oil field, and we all move into this house. So his mom ended up moving in the house too. Now I already told y'all, man, a mom's boy. <laughs> So his mama ended up moving in the house too. But it was huge. It was like 4,000 square feet. So the house was big enough where you, you know, his sister had an area. She had two full bedrooms and her own bathroom. She had her part of the house. Um, my oldest was upstairs, but he was at the end. And I was downstairs. Me and the boys were downstairs. Their room was downstairs. And our bedroom, we had the master because, you know, I mean, because he had to have the master. <laughs> Anywho. 
Uh, so. I was cohabitating with my in-laws, y'all. I sure was. I was cohabitating with my in-laws. And baby, 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 baby. These folks were disgusting. I knew they was nasty before. Um, I knew that they their living was really, really, you know, but, you know, you know, was, I don't know why I thought maybe his sister like being around his sister is only a, I think she's two years younger than me I was born in 90 so I'm 34 I believe she's 32 or she might be 33 but anywho we living in the house it's me his mom his sister her kids my kids and then since he was in the oil field the baby daddy was in the oil field when he would come home he was gone and then when the baby daddy would come home, my ex-husband would go. So it was, even though it was a lot of us in the house, we, the schedule, it worked out. It worked out. But anywho, y'all, so we, him and I started kind of having issues bumping heads again. And not because of like stuff between him and I, because he was in oil field. You know, if you think about the oil field, he was making like 10K a month. I'm not working for the first time. I'm over here, you know, pursuing aesthetics and you know going to school and taking clients on the side blah 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 um he was handling the household finances because he's making money he in the whole field so um his mom and i we never really had any major issues other than her constantly borrowing my vehicle every time i turn around somebody was borrowing something somebody was always borrowing something <coughs> anywho but now that we were all living together i was like okay this is becoming a lot um, and I would tell him, like, your sister is really, really nasty. Like, you know, like, it's the difference between being junkie. I'm a junkie individual. Like I said, I'm an Aries, but I know what everything is. I'm going to tell you all story. Not so, an Aries, though. So. Um, it was, like, the middle of the day. I was the only person at the house, and it was a whole bunch of flies. And I'm like, where are these flies coming from? I go upstairs. I'm thinking my son had been eating in his room. I go down the hallway. Her room was so filthy. It was a million di uh, diapers on the floor, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I mean, I deal with depression and I deal with anxiety. So I knew that that's what it was stemming from. But I'm also like, look, like this is not normal. Like this is not normal. This is not normal. So let me tell y'all, I'm going to get into all that too. So when I, like living with people, you find out things about them that you did not know. You know, whether it's a platonic relationship, family, et cetera. So, um, here we are 2018 and he had a first cousin who lived in, in Dallas as well. She was more like a sister and she came over like losing her mind, frantic. And I'm like, what the heck is going on? So they were trying to like, keep me out the loop, keep me out the conversation. Um, because first of all, I'm not a blood relative. I'm an in-law. Um, and they, I'm, I'm the person that <laughs> they didn't want to to know stuff right away because I'm I don't play them games so we are literally at our house his sister is there with her her kids his mom is there his brother is there his brother didn't live there but his brother was there he was heavily drunk he was an alcoholic um I don't know if he is now I pray he isn't man. but he has been drinking since he was 17 she um, him all he the was business. heavily intoxicated and he and I'm like, what's going on? They were all emotional at the table. And I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? They didn't want to tell me right away. So come to find out the first cousin who lived in a DFW, her husband had been essaying um, her children who were at the time like five and seven. Um, so I'm sitting there like, what? I'm losing my mind because I knew that my nephew, my ex-husband's nephew, but I'm still going to call him my nephew, even though they've all cut me off and we'll get to that. Um, had, he was constantly over there. So I'm like, oh my God, I'm at the table. I'm emotional. I'm like, what's like, this is crazy. And my ex-husband's youngest brother, like I said, he was super drunk. He was like, I know what that, you know, that is like. And, you know, he going to be messed up and da, 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 da. And he brought in... The sister that was living there too, he was like, you know what it's like too, da 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 da. And I'm looking like, what the heck? And the mama is like trying to get him to hush, like trying to get him to hush. And I'm looking like, what the heck? What's, you know, what y'all talking about? Because I didn't know. Well, there was a history of abuse in the family, and Damn. I did not find out till 2018. It's 2018. 
late like fall 2018 and i'm just now finding out that there is a history of s abuse in my ex-husband's family so i call him because he was not there when you know we found out about his cousin um her husband abusing her children he was not there so he comes he came back and it was a big old yeah like they were fighting the baby daddy got involved like it was a it was a big old brow like they were fighting which should have been should have been he deserved the the uh cousin's ex-husband deserved all the licks that he got because that's not right that but right. prior to you know prior to such when i'm talking to my ex-husband i'm like look you, you know your brother said xyz and he brought in your sister and da 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 so he didn't have a choice but to tell me right so come to find out like it's Tell look, me all the business because literally i'm over here like who did i who was i married to i really did not know this person so um he told me that he was the only one supposedly him and uh so basically it was six of them the oldest three which he claims and i don't believe him because of i just don't but he says that him and his two siblings above him did not experience abuse, but the youngest three did. So his brother that's right after him, they look like twins. And he said him and, you know, the other two all experienced abuse at the hands of their uncle, who was a pastor. So the uncle was a pastor back in L.A. Um, he impregnated a niece, so their cousin, et cetera, et cetera. So that's on, whose side was that? That is on the dad's side. Then come to find out his, my, my mother-in-law, her siblings, they had experienced abuse at the hands of their dad. So like I mentioned, my husband had a grandfather that passed away in 2015. That was his dad's dad but it wasn't what it wasn't him excuse me it wasn't him that did oh. abuse it was his mom's dad now my, my ex mother-in-law's mom passed away when she was a little girl so she got they got snatched away from their dad and it never made sense to me like why they get snatched away from their dad you know and come to find out it's because the dad was abusing him boys and girls um and my ex-husband like it's crazy because they will even to this day they'll act like none of this stuff existed or none of it happened they don't deal with this stuff and i'm over here like this is stuff that i need to know he's like well why do you need to know this because it's my children's lineage like <laughs> when we were in kansas his mom's dad so his grandpa lived in kansas in the same area in junction city completely random i don't know how he got down there i don't know the story but i was like wait you know because at the time my grandparents were all alive so i'm like why would we not go to your you know your grandparents house they're right there we went over there one time and <clears throat> i didn't know then when i knew fast forward that was 2016 i found out in 2018 about the abuse the history of abuse so i'm literally like what the heck is going on <laughs> yeah like i'm like what the heck i'm still parenting now i've started a business right so i'm trying to still maintain my sanity while also dealing with all of this stuff not to mention my family stuff um i didn't have anything major going on in my family but the point is just like i have family too but i was so tied up in his family stuff that yeah so anywho um fall 2018 kids go back to school so this again this is around the time we found out about the abuse etc cetera, etc cetera. so our middle son is now in kindergarten and he's having like he's struggling in school so um he had like speech issues but now he's struggling in school and I'm concerned, you know, cause I'm like, why is my baby struggling like this? Like, you know, my oldest son has, you know, excelled in school. So to have a child that wasn't, this is different for me. And, you know, 
Um, long story short, my baby, um, he's on a spectrum. He has ADHD, but we didn't find those things out then. What we found out then was that he was dyslexic and he had, you know, multiple forms of dyslexia. When I found that out, I was taking him to behavioral therapy and my ex-husband, like I said, was in the oil field. So this is 2018. So I'm like, oh my God, you know, this is happening with Le, Le, uh, Le, my middle baby, I almost said his name. Um, and he's like, oh yeah, that makes sense because I'm dyslexic. <laughs> he's like, yeah, I am my brother, this person, my brother, this person, you know, because he has multiple siblings. And I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. That's something I shouldn't know. <laughs> like, we have two children together. I mean, how do if you I not would, know no. that you cannot read? And I know y'all probably like, how did it you go? Know? How, how long I don't it was for you got pregnant? Know. The man was dyslexic. I'm not laughing at his disability at all because I have, you know, I have, I'm a neurodivergent person. I'm laughing because it's like, what the heck is going on? That's something you should tell somebody. So when I say something, I'm like, Dang, between the, the the family history stuff and this, like, bro, like, this is crazy. This is crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But my crazy tail self was looking for a house to buy. Because <laughs> I had to get up out the house with his family. Because his mother was wearing me out. His sister was dirty as all downstairs. And the other sister, baby daddy, got shot in the head by Dallas police. She ended up losing her place and they was out in the house. I'm like, I got to get up out of here. It's too much. I, I don't even know how to this day. <laughs> like, how did I get? <laughs> how did I deal with all that? I don't know, y'all. I don't know. Um, and I'm, don't I'm not them like too you. deep into the family drama because I'm trying to trying to be nice, but I can talk about that for hours. I can talk about that for that for for probably weeks. Um, but. Please don't. I'm gonna focus in, in how this stuff affected me. So again, I'm like, we got a bad house. We got to get up out of here because this is too much. I can't live. Which I, this was supposed to be a temporary situation. It was only supposed to be a year, and it was only supposed to be the one sister, the mom, and the sister's two kids, and a baby daddy every couple weeks. Now here we are, another sister, and her three kids. Yep, exit stage right. So now here we are, later in 2018, like I said, this was 5 2018 when I found out everything. Now we have bought a house, we've closed on a house. It didn't take long because we started the process. Um, originally, we started that process in 2016. We started again in 2017. So I know y'all probably like, how y'all buy, that's how. And then mind you, this is before, you know, the pandemic, all that. So it was not hard to buy a house. So we bought a house, he's in an oil field. And this is when, um, I started leveling up with my business. Like my business was doing quite well. And that's when I realized just how much that man really hated me. This man has just told me his di he is dyslexic. When I found out that our middle child together, our first child together has dyslexia. So imagine spending the last six, seven years with someone, seven, eight years, excuse me, and just now finding out that they have a learning disability and a history of essay abuse in their family. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all, to this day, I feel in my heart of hearts that that man also experienced abuse just because of the perversion, right? I didn't mention this and I thought about it earlier just because of course, when you go through so much trauma in a relationship, um, you like I have found myself like reliving and you know remembering things that I have put you know put away or tried to take away from my memory for instance one of the things that I just you I recalled is early on in our uh in that marriage he had a corn addiction I'm trying to learn the, the terminology I'm new to this TikTok TikTok uh content creator stuff but i'm here and i got a lot of stories for y'all but anywho so when i think of that like in i you know again i forgot about that i forgot about that now i'm kind of like piecing together the puzzles of my own the puzzle of my own life in that marriage that of course now is broken and we're not married i am remarried thank god for jesus 
Um, I'm actually with my husband. I'm gonna let him come <laughs> kind of join and engage too because he's hilarious, okay? But anywho, um, nonetheless, so I found out that my kid's dad is dyslexic. So now I'm like, sir, who are you? Seriously, like, who are you? Um, but again, like I'm building my business, I'm building my brand and I started working from home and then I moved into a suite in early 2018. Well, by this time around the time that we were buying or closing on the house, my business was like skyrocketing. Like I was doing very, very well in as a, a new entrepreneur, as a esthetician specializing in specifically corrective skincare. So with me doing so well, like I'm gonna be honest with y'all, um, a couple things now that I'm like, okay, major red flags, i.e. For, uh, for example, that man never came to my first suite that I, um, I was renting where I started my business. Um, I was there for about nine months, he never came. Um, my second location, uh, my business name is Look Skin Studio, aka LSS Spa. My second location was in a professional building first floor location to room 400 square feet i was so excited about that space because i went from 86 square feet to 400 that's a major difference in less than a year um he never came like he never came up there now did he help me move some stuff in etc cetera, etc cetera? yes but think of like when you are an entrepreneur you should have a supportive partner not one time did he come help me pass out flyers. He wasn't telling people like, you know, he, he was not involved in my business because my business was doing so well. And on the flip side, he was in a space where he didn't really know what he was he wanted to do. Like he was working in the oil field, like I mentioned to y'all, but he will work at one at one location for like two to three months, quit that location, go to another one. Like he was quitting jobs so regularly that he essentially put himself in a situation where he could not well no one would hire him and let me tell y'all when it happened it happened the same month like him losing his job it happened or it happened around the same time that i got diagnosed with a rare form of kidney disease so in 2018 i got diagnosed with fsgs which is a rare form of kidney disease okay so i'm building this business from scratch i'm building a business dealing with a very a marriage that's not fulfilled no god in it at all and now I have this major health situation as well, right? And now this man done lost his job <sighs> because he thought he would get another one because he kept working for these companies and quitting, working for these companies and quitting. Well, if you're watching this, you probably like, well, people talk. Exactly. As a <laughs> as an employer, I'm going to tell you right now, like I have other you know, um, salon owner sisters, and we talk amongst each other, you know, or if I, if they ask me about someone who used to work for me, vice versa, et cetera, right? So anywho, he essentially, I don't think he realized, like, you set yourself up for failure because you keep quitting these jobs. You could, the man could not keep a job, and now you can't get a job, right? So he's unemployed. Because he was unemployed, I lost all my health care benefits. So I didn't have any health care benefits. Here I am, newly diagnosed with a major disease and no health care benefits. None. He like, she's business, telling this damn story again. Multiple children. <laughs> um, you know, essay history, uh, essay abuse history. Like, 2018 was such a and if you're watching this and you're a client of mine you're probably like what you would have never known that i was going through so much because i see people commenting on other videos like i didn't know i didn't know no because a couple things first of all god is good and god has blessed me with so much strength second of all and when i say it wasn't your business it's not as if i just i feel like I didn't, I wasn't in a situation where I wanted to tell people about this. But anywho. Probably so ashamed yes, of it too. Yes, I would be. I am building a business and excelling because I moved into my new space and I literally will open my schedule up, right? So my schedule will open and I will book out for weeks at a time within a few minutes. And he was watching that. He was watching that as he was going his career was spiraling downward mine was going upward 
I was having a Cardi B season and he was having a, I don't know, I don't know how to explain, but he was not having a good season in his life, but I was having a very, very good season. So, anywho, clothes on the house and now here we are and I have decided it is time for me to really, really move on. Yep, I decided that. So now here it is, uh, late 2018, now we're into 2019. Okay, so part 13. Oh, part, yeah, this is part 13. So I apologize, I ghosted y'all for a couple days, um, but I own a business, so I've been occupied. But nonetheless, okay. So last part, 11 and 12, I shared how I found out about the history of essay abuse in a family because of a recent essay situation that happened with his first cousin's husband and their children um and then i also found out that same year that this man has dyslexia as well as multiple like i think he told me if i recall a couple of his siblings also have it and my our first child together my middle child got diagnosed in 2018 with with dyslexia um, multiple different forms of that so so here we are in the 2018 we just bought a house this man lost his job he's unemployed i just got diagnosed with a rare form of kidney disease and like i ended the last video i kind of made up in my mind it was time for me to go ahead and let this marriage go so early 2019 i started um i started looking for a storefront spot for my spa business so i'm a spa professional i'm a licensed esthetician in the dfw area and I started looking for a storefront because my business, like I said, it was booming. I was doing very well. I was booking out week after week. My clientele was increasing and I just, I needed a little bit more space. So I started looking for a storefront and one of my clients, um, I ended up really befriending. So if you're in the beauty industry or if you know somebody in the beauty industry, you know, it's kind of inevitable for us to end up, you know, our clients a lot of times end up becoming our friends or like family to us. So, <laughs> a client who was a male, a gay male at that, um, we became really, really good friends. So we would talk regularly. Don't introduce him to your husband. I would go out with him in his his uh, friend circle because I was I didn't do anything. If you listen over the course of the last few years, I share with you guys. Until I was 25, I didn't even really go out, and that was at you know at that time in Kansas for a few months. I was going out. Fast forward, wasn't going out again. Now here we are, 2018, late 2018, early 2019. And I'm hanging out with people around my age and um, getting to know the DFW area. Because I have been down here for like, at this point, a year and a half, almost two years, basically two years. And I didn't know anything about downtown Dallas. I had never really went out. So I started hanging out really tough with this guy. I'm going to call him JJ. So me and JJ became really, really good friends and JJ actually was my interior designer. JJ designed my second location, my second spot location. And then JJ also was helping me do my storefront, my first storefront. So my ex-husband hated JJ for absolutely no reason. Did not know this man from a can of paint. All he knew is that me, his then wife, was hanging out with this, you know, this male, um, and he we liked were hanging JJ. out tough, like, <laughs> hanging out tough. Anytime that I would be on the phone with JJ, my husband would be very, you know, just very rude. Anytime that JJ would come around, because he came to my house, because we became friends, my husband would immediately go to a different room. Like, he could not function around this man, and it's so crazy. Um, when I think about this again, like I said, all of these things start coming back to you when you leave a situation. So he hated this man. And JJ introduced me to, you know, other people in his circle, um, all type of people in the LGBTQ community. Um, because as you guys probably have learned, I am I'm look, okay. I'm we we in the community, okay? So um, <laughs> I love people. I love all people from all walks, all backgrounds. She mean her and her husband. I befriended his friends. So, I mean, everyone from his barber, who was a trans man, started cutting my, you know, kid's hair. Like, I just, I mean, 
that was that's the norm here in the DFW. Like you don't know who's who, you don't know it's really none of your business either. But nonetheless, the point is, I was creating my own friend circle, and it was making him uncomfortable because he didn't have any friends. If you notice, I never mentioned anything about him um, having any friends or hanging out with anyone. He did not. Um, that was one of the things. Again, I know y'all probably like red flag. Like All right, red flag. Okay, please. I grew up Pentecostal in almost like a cult situation on both sides. I'm gonna tell y'all about that. That's a whole nother series. <laughs> Because that has to be a series, okay? I'm essentially a cult baby on both sides. But nonetheless, the point is, I was very naive, okay? Young and naive, and I did not grow up like most people. So the point is, yes, I know that those things are red flags now as a 34-year-old woman, but as a 20-something-year-old woman, I didn't know that that should have been a red flag. But nonetheless, this man didn't have any friends. Um, he literally played the video game sent up to sundown with his one sister, um, the one who experienced abuse. Uh, that's all they did. That's it. So she really, I, she doesn't have any friends either. Like, I, was around, I was around this whole family and none of them had any friendships outside of each other. Which now, again, yes, I'm aware. It's really kind of different. Um, you know, no shade if that's your, your family life as well. But all in all, you should have friends or associates. You should have a life outside of your siblings. But he did not, nor did his siblings that were here. They were all intertwined. They were always, you know, doing something together. So nonetheless, um, me and JJ will be at the spa from very, very late hours, very, very early hours because I was still taking clients. So I'm taking clients at my other location and I'm setting up the spa at the same time. I'm also very sick. I was on chemo at the time. Um, my body... My kidney function was dropping so rapidly that my then doctor was trying to do as much as possible to save my kidneys. So we did a lot of different treatments. I was on 22 different medications. Um, I had a lot going on. I had a lot going on in 2019. I was going through all of this. And like I mentioned, he was unemployed. So he's unemployed. I'm working like a crazy person trying to get this spot open. And I'm creating a friend group and I'm occupying myself again and we still haven't dealt with any marriage, you know, any done any work for this marriage. And I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to focus on me. Like legit, like I said, I kind of made up like 2019, this is the last year. I told myself I was not going to spend my 30s. I turned 29 in April of 2019. But I told myself after 29, I was not dealing with this man on that level anymore part 14 okay so it's 2019 as i mentioned i am in the middle of searching for a new spa front uh, storefront spa my first storefront spa i found the spa and now i'm working on building the spa out or you know doing the decor etc i'm hanging with my friend jj constantly who is a gay because i don't know if i can say that on here y'all um, male and he's introducing me to his friend circle who is full of the LGBTQ community and I'm enjoying spending time with them. I went to holiday parties, birthday parties, etc. And my ex-husband did not like him. He completely hated this man that I befriended for no reason. <laughs> right. We know the reason. We know the reason, y'all. But anywho. So, April 2019, my 29th birthday, like I mentioned, I kind of made up. This was like, this was the last year that I was going to spend in this unhappy marriage. So, my grand opening was June 1st or 2nd of 2019. So, y'all, let me tell y'all, I didn't mention this, but that man could cook his tail off, okay? The one thing I can say is that the Lord be blessing me with husbands that can cook. Because the one now, okay, my husband can cook and that one could cook too. But imagine being with a man who can cook so very well, but did not want to cook for your event. This man did not want to cook for my event. He did not. He called himself that same year, 2019, attempting to start a catering business. Um, never did anything with it. And I said, well, this can be an opportunity for you to showcase your skill set and your, you know, your business you want to start um, to my clientele. Because I had established clientele. Like I said, I was booking out weeks and months in advance um, 
Still do. Shout out. It's a fly in my house, y'all. Excuse me. <laughs> the diaper's still in there. I was trying to kill it. That's anywho. So nonetheless, um, he didn't do it. He didn't want to do it. Um, he was just I don't even recall the reasoning, but he didn't want to do it. So I was just like, okay, whatever. Now imagine having this monumental moment. I had my first baby at 16, okay? The odds have been against me my whole life. Um and I'm opening a storefront spot. And the person that I'm married to showed up late, showed up with his family, um, very not demure, okay? Not demure at all. Um, busting out his shirt. Oh, I want to post a picture so bad. I may post a picture of my group open it and just close it. <laughs> I showed his face. I was so upset. I'm like, I'm over here looking like Beyonce. 50 pounds heavy. And this is what you, like, it didn't, we did not match each other. And again, this is when I really, you know, realized I was unequally yoked with this man. Because, you know, now my husband now would have prayed over my business. We started out, they would pray, we do. But anywho, nonetheless, the point is, this man showed up late. His family did not show up appropriately, to say the least. Um, and... I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed. I, you would assume that he came with flowers or something to celebrate me, but he did not. Um, he did not. He didn't want to celebrate me. He did not. He did not want to celebrate me because it was not about him. Um, I've learned that if it was not about him, typical narcissist behavior, if it's not about them, they don't care. They do not care. So he didn't care. Uh, actually left early. Um, didn't really do much afterwards. Again, there was no celebration of me in this monumental occasion. Nonetheless, business is booming. I'm booming. He's unemployed still. So now he's unemployed. Fast forward, it's August 2019. So August was our anniversary month, right? So we had already had a trip plan. I'm the type, look, regardless of what you got going on, I'm going out of town. To this day, I'm going to go out of town, okay? So um, we were going to Vegas. We went to Vegas and we were out of town y'all and that's when i found out essentially that this man had been using our credit cards and the credit cards were maxed out they were maxed out um they were maxed out american express black card if you know you know and when i basically said something to him his response was you know i'm starting this business she was a hundred thousand um, in debt when I start back working, I'm going to pay for this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And I'm just like, there was never any, and I didn't say this or speak about this over this series, but we didn't really, we had a joint account, but I'm a little old school. My mother was, you know, a single, <laughs> my mother was married multiple times. So I learned from my mother um, a few times. I learned from my mother. My mother taught me, you always have your own. You always have your own, you know, y'all have, you know, joint account to handle business, but you have your own. So the point is, I didn't really, I won't really in his financial business other than when it affected our household. So nonetheless, the point is, that's when it hit me. Like this man been maxing out these credit cards. We out of town. And I'm like, oh my gosh, it's August. Now I'm thinking about the rest of the year, right? 2019. I want y'all to think about this. I'm on chemo. I'm sick. I'm blown up. Um, dealing with again just less a year and a half ago got diagnosed with a major you know major disease um, in this marriage that is not fulfilling mom life I got three kids plus a bonus child um, away from my family and then the end of 2019 comes around and it's the holiday season so the holiday season of course um, was on me I hosted I, I'm a I love to host you know for family so I hosted Thanksgiving Nobody, you know, people are coming in who know me from my life. I didn't know, I didn't know, no, because I wouldn't have let you know. So I'm hosting, I'm covering everything financially. The only thing that he could really cover on the financial side was his insurance um, or the vehicle insurance, his personal cell phone bills, and then whatever personal bills he had because I wasn't paying his personal bills. But when it came to the household, he could no longer assist because, again, savings have ran out. So he could no longer assist when it came to the household. So, y'all, I was paying a mortgage. We live in McKinney, Texas, in a gated community. It was the only black family in this community, okay? Oh, we was around old money. House was absolutely beautiful on a quarter acre of land. Big old house. 
and uh, he couldn't afford to pay. He couldn't help pay the mortgage anymore. He couldn't help the bills, pay the bills. So it was all on me. So I'm working like a crazy person, building a business, dealing with health issues, and also covering everything financially as he sat there and played video games all day. I would encourage him, hey, because then I, it hit me like, this man is depressed. Like, he's depressed. I deal with anxiety and depression. So I'm looking like, this is a depression deal. So I recommended for him, you know, hey, you should probably start doing something for yourself. Like, you know, finding a hobby, finding something other than video games. Um, because this is not healthy. Like, I will come home. I will leave in the morning to go to work. You know, drop the kids off or he will drop the kids off, whatever. And I will come home. And he would still be playing the video games. Like, he played the video games from sunup to sundown. Sunup to sundown. So, end of 2019, fast forward, and it's the top of 2020. And again, I had came up with this plan. I had money saved. Um, I had probably about, at that time, it was definitely, I had a five-digit number saved. And I told myself, okay, like, it's time, Ari. Like, it's time, it's time, it's time. And then the pandemic happened. What it do, everyday people, man? It's your boy PJ. Today we back with another lit video. We back in the confessional, and yes, we stay in lit, big dog. Shout out to my everyday people who rock with me every day. Shout out to my homeboy Lucky Woods of Deals and Keys Lit. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe to this video. Let me know what y'all think about it in the comment section. Now hit the link down below. We got the opulent scents. Okay, get you a three wood candle. Get you some of that. Uh, pumpkin spice to get that holiday seasoning flavors and scents at opulent scents okay link down, down below in the description now let's get into it now now now, now. i got a few things to touch on let's i'm gonna start from the end because we're gonna get to the husband i'm gonna start from the end where i'm because i'm gonna make this quick that the husband is now on hard times 90% of his hard times is due to his uh, selfishness and neglect and stubbornness and everything else that he has done to this woman has finally came to pass, which I think he was in a depression, which is why he continued to lash out and do these egregious things to her, didn't show her any concern of her business or her life. Um, I'm, I'm questioning what he did with the kids um, at this point in time in this story in his life because it seems to me that it's deeper than just what he did with her. As, as much neglect as he showed her, I'm sure he showed to those kids. She didn't mention one time about him being helpful with the kids being uh, or doing anything with her oldest son, I'm, I know he, he's pretty much not even there for him at this point. So, um, which she hasn't spoke about, and I, maybe maybe she'll talk a little bit about it in uh, future videos. Uh, but again, we, we're running into a whole nother story with this about her husband. Hopefully, we'll get to the divorce soon. Because I'm like, child, you moved in a, a seven-bedroom with him and his family. Then you move into another home with him, into a gated community, which he went from working all the time, bringing in these checks, to now he's a habitual job seeker and quitter. He's quitting every job that he comes into for two or three months. Now he's unemployed, so why buy this expensive house in McKinney, Texas? And yes, I'm familiar with that area, but I'm trying to figure out why she chose to continue on to this path, knowing and seeing all this is going down. And the relationship just wasn't on key. Now, maybe, possibly, she was comfortable because of the marriage situation that he may have been some form of help to the family because he wasn't employed. Okay? So that's that's what I got. I mean, it's just a lot. It's just like, it's, I want you to tell us more, Ari. Tell us more because it, it it's like you skipping all the good stuff. 
and then I don't want to make assumptions and be wrong. But I'm I'm coming to that that I'm starting to make assumptions about. Now delusional as hell that you are, but at this point we can't blame it on you being young. I blame it on your situation that you currently in and you are trying to get like while you weren't working a lot or probably bringing in the money because you really you leaned on him for his benefits his pension his paycheck to come in when he was overseas was why you was able to go to school and all this stuff and get your life together that you've been working on but you were a key factor in the family so I don't want to take, this is why I don't want to, that's why I want to put that first part first because he don't seem like he's being a key factor in the family when she is bringing in the money. Now, when it, uh, when it, when it was her turn at the beginning, seems as if she was a key factor in, you know, she had a lot of free time on her hand. That's why she called him cheating or whatever. When he was the main uh, residual income, he was out doing the most. Now, now it's her turn. So now she's doing the most. She's out mingling and mixing up with friends. And now he doesn't like it. He can't take it. But remember, he dished it at the beginning. And now he can't take it. But this time he's doing it. She's doing it with some friends that he doesn't like. And there's a reason why this man don't like JJ or whatever she called his name because JJ living in his truth. He's out being flamboyant, shiny suit, wearing P. Diddy, all down man. And her husband is jealous. Not because he's your friend, but because that man is open with his sexuality. And and JJ probably be checking them out. But I guess we're going to have to find out. That's why I said she's not giving us enough. I'm making assumptions. But she led on to believe that, you know what, after, like, after seeing this hindsight, I know why he didn't like him. It's because, I mean, it's obvious to me. So, you know, you it's listen, man. I had a gay cousin. I'm gonna tell y'all this. I had a gay cousin. His name I'm not gonna disclose, but uh, my cousin is now arrested in heaven. Um, one of my favorite cousins, but not no buts. He was he was gay. Um, now we knew he was gay since we was kids because you know you just got that cousinness. And uh, but it, it, we still treat him, we still treated him like we still picked on each other, we still was friends, we still when family get togethers, we playing spades together, you know, we talking about clothes, shoes, his his friends that were girls. They were fine. They still fine to this day. Um, but, you know, you joke talking about the good old stuff. But when we was like 18, you know what I'm saying, I was in my gangbanging days. And uh, I went to the club, and I seen my cousin at the club. And I pulled up on him. And, you know, he up in there smoking on this black. And, uh... I'm like, hey, what up? He like, BJ. He put his arms around me like that. I'm like, yo, <laughs> we ain't never hugged like that. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> he was drunk, though. <laughs> He's like, my cousin. And the homies just look at me like, hey, cuz, what's up with you, man? I'm like, man, chill out. That's my cousin, man. <laughs> what you want me to say? Not say nothing to my cousin, bro. He's drunk, chilling, you know. Man, mind your business, like, like y'all ain't got no gay cousins, you know what I'm saying? But I mean, of course everybody do, you know what I'm saying? Especially when they studs. Oh, speaking of, I was thinking, of, I was looking at this couch. I want this couch. I seen this couch. I went couch shopping not long ago, 
And I seen this couch and I said, yep, that's going in a new place. I cannot wait. Y'all gonna see that soon. House tour coming soon. But um, yeah, it was crazy. So needless to say, you, you you should feel comfortable. You can feel comfortable around people that, you know, my, uh, there's somebody that I was around. They had gay family members always around, you know, you know, so this is the thing. This will get me. Y'all dudes be so uncomfortable around gays but y'all all be smoking on the same blood I, I'm just saying so you know you don't know where your friend lives man. and if you're a friend like me I be just getting off my girl man, I come from the back me and my girl come from the back y'all don't drink after me don't do nothing it went down it probably went down, and now it was probably me going down, okay? Okay. So I just want to tell y'all that, you know, people, y'all act like y'all get the cooties from gays, and it's weird, but they just people too, you know? So, you know, um, one time I was doing a video, and somebody was like, you don't want to disrespect the gays, but you'll talk about a black woman. So I talk about gays too. <laughs> they can take a dick, but they can't take a joke. What the fuck is up with that? Okay, so you, you can, ain't everybody good to get these jokes. Okay, so you know if it's a joke, just don't slander people. You don't, I don't slander women, not that much. I did. Somebody called me out. It's like you ugly, and you you say ten years make a difference, man. I was, See, this is why this is why everybody everybody ain't able to be on this channel. Like, if you can't take a joke, because sometimes I say jokes. I don't be serious. I don't care about these people. I love big women. If you know any of my women, they are not small. They fluffy. All of them. All my kids' moms, all my girlfriends, fluffy. Okay? <laughs> they got nice bodies. But and all, okay. So, don't don't be discouraged by someone making jokes about your weight, your sexuality, your uh, appearance. Okay, I'm bald head. My hairline start back here. Okay, it like it like horseshoes. That's why I'm always wearing a hat, cause I be like, it's growing out, and I just don't feel like shaving. So, so what? If you want to talk about my hair being crooked, so what? Make the jokes. They used to call me fat. <laughs> Not anymore. Okay. HiveMindLabs.com. Unbig that back. But what I'm saying is, nobody's nobody's uh, free of scrutiny. Uh, and if you're comfortable with who you are, nobody can make you feel ashamed about who you are. Just live your life. Because on, only you going to live it. People can say what they want to say about you. You know? Hey, but all I can tell you is, if, if, if people hate you, just get money. <laughs> if people hate you, just get money. You know why? I'm finna cry my way to the bank, bitch. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, dude hated JJ and JJ didn't give a damn that he hated him. So y'all learn from JJ. Forget what people say, especially when it's coming from a woman that don't even like her husband and that nigga hate you. <laughs> JJ was like, man, I'm with your bitch. I'm with your bitch. Okay. It's just like that, dog. It's just like that. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff that was going on in this video. And, uh, you know, that was one of the main things is that 
uh, dude hated JJ and the dude didn't support his wife. And then, you know, the role, roles have reversed. And she's happily married and happily being supported. She has a wonderful couch that I actually admire. And, you know, at this point, we want to get to the divorce and see, like, how it went down. I'm pretty sure, you know, there was some devastation. I think they co-parent to a certain degree. Um, and not that she's outing him to the world about his situation, uh, but that his wife is comfortable with that situation. At this point, like I said, man, let people live. Let people be who they're going to be. But if his wife is comfortable with that situation, who are we to judge him and that man, that man at this point? You know what I'm saying? Because at this point, it'd be like judging JJ. And JJ don't give a damn. So we, we shouldn't bash him for what he's doing. It's, 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 it, it's a story shocker. But it's not uncommon. Okay? So, at this point, I mean, shit. Look at TikTok. It's all over TikTok. Look at Twitter. It's all over Twitter. Look at, um, it's, I don't know. I don't know if it's on it. My algorithm ain't on that Instagram, okay? <laughs> but it's out there. So, you know, at this point, just pray for uh, her husband. Because whatever demons he said he had to battle, that, you know, he got the help that he needed. He, he, he wasn't the man for her. And thank God she moved on. And thank God she, like, I don't know if this is her healing. Because it sounds like a therapy session to her. This sounds like her getting this off her chest. Like she felt like she had to hide his secret for him. And she wanted to tell the truth. And that is what it is, I mean. Is it right? At this point, is he did he hurt you? Is he still hurting you? Or is this just I don't know if this is get back or what is this? Cause if um I've always heard about never wake a sleeping dog. Let the sleeping dog lie. Let the sleeping dog lie. That's what it is. Let the sleeping dog lie. All right? Everyday people, man, let me know what y'all think about this video in the comment section. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace. <laughs>